I am going to be rebooting the channel, you know, with lots of arcade videos and arcade stuff. So, if you've been waiting, you know, like right here pretty soon, I should be pretty active back on the channel. All right, welcome back, everyone. Ortiz X187, back at it, right, with another arcade pickup. This time around, I've got a Shinobi by Sega. So this cabinet right here is pretty good, is in pretty good shape. I picked it up, you know, a couple days ago. And I'm kind of delayed a little bit in the videos. Let me see, let me get a light on so we take a better look at the cabinet. But I am going to be rebooting the channel, you know, with lots of arcade videos and arcade stuff. So if you've been waiting, you know, like right here pretty soon, I should be pretty active back on the channel. So yeah, the cabinet is in pretty, is in pretty good shape. Not too much damage to it. A little bit on the control panel right here. On the sticker only, but you know, not bad. And the CRT monitor that's in it is in good condition. I think it's like a 27 or a 28 inch. So it is a pretty big monitor. So this time around I did get lucky and I got the keys. Well I got one key. One of them was like broken off. But as long as one of them works, right? And I'm good. So I was able to open this up without you know drawing it out or nothing like that. So that's always a plus. And one thing about this cabinet right here is that it does not open up from the back. I normally open up the back of the cabinet and take a look in, you know, at the back of the monitors. But in this case, I can't because it's, it's literally like stapled or glued shut, you know, whatever. So there is a way to get to the board, the PCB board, and that is through the control panel. And if you actually needed to do anything to the CRT monitor, any work or, you know, look at it, you would have to pull it from the front, like literally pull the monitor out. <laughs> so that kind of sucks. But, yeah, so let's open up the control panel and take a look at the, at the PCB board that's inside of it. I believe it's a Sega System 16 board. So there are two latches on the control panel inside of it. One on this side, the top right here, on the left, and then one on the right hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the through this part right here to kind of like, you know, stick my hand in there and unlock them. Let me see. There it goes. So in this case, I'm pretty sure it's locked one side of it. Yeah. Just to make it easier to get in here. So the control panel swings down. And this board slides out or up and out. You know, the only thing is you have to be careful if you have this type of cabinet not to pull it out too far because I mean, you will pull it all the way out and more than likely <laughs> pull the rest of the wiring with it and mess it up. So if you're doing this, you know, just be careful. But it does come out far enough to where you can like you know, see the board or inspect the board. So that's good. So, I did get pretty lucky with this pickup. Now, it was posted as not working. 
So when I went out, I knew that there was going to be some type of issue with it. But I went ahead and, you know, rolled the dice and picked it up anyways. So when I got there, you know, I kind of opened it up. What I wanted to do, or what I normally do is, you know, I want to see that the board is inside of it. Or that it's an original board at least. Not like a multi, multi-game board or nothing like that. And since I don't know much about this system or didn't know much about the system um, you know I seen the bottom board but I didn't realize that the top board the actual game was missing out of it and what happened was I don't know I guess when the guy was moving it or something like that the top board popped off of it and it fell you know inside at the bottom of the cabinet and he just didn't realize it so when I brought it back brought it back home and opened it up I noticed that it was back there. So I cleaned it up a little bit and just, you know, popped it back in place and crossed my fingers, right? And it fired right up. So when I was first looking at this at this board, you know, it looks like a standard JAMA board. But then I seen this little other JAMA harness wired up to it and a couple people were telling me that you know it's not standard JAMA that you actually do need some type of adapter like that for it so that was pretty interesting right there to know and right here we can see you know the Sega made in Japan 1986 Shinobi and what's pretty cool about this one is that the guy had printed out kind of like the settings or the dip switches on here for it and on one of these I seen up oh, right here for the display you could toggle the the Japanese and English off and on along with the difficulty and, and you know all kinds of other stuff like that So yeah, I guess the only thing to do, since I said we can't open up the back of it to look at the monitor, is I guess close this bad boy up and maybe um, maybe play a little game. I don't know. I don't know if I should start doing that in these videos or if I should just start doing a separate video of just for the gameplay. One other thing right here, if, you, if anyone noticed, someone probably noticed, was like, what is that right there? That's actually a piece or a part for the monitor to adjust, um, you know, the, the settings of the monitor. So, so that's pretty cool that that's there. We actually don't have to go all the way in there into the back to do that. And I guess I did miss a couple a couple of other little things, right? The sound for the board can be controlled right there. The little white knob right there. So yeah, like I was saying, the bottom of the board is the actual player with the system and the top board is interchangeable you know for different games now there is quite a few games for this system I don't know the exact you know amount of games but I do know that you can get the top board for Golden Axe so that's pretty cool too I guess I was kind of like jumping ahead, right, of myself a little bit. There is one other thing that we can take a look at before we take a little look at the, the game plan. And that is inside the coin door right here. It has, let me see, grab my light. has a test switch 
right here along with the rest of the functions so if I flip this down and then back up for some reason it goes into the options or the bookkeeping of the game so if I wanted to mess with it it's right there This one's a little bit different, it looks like every time I switch it down and up. It goes into the different settings. Yeah, so that's pretty cool right there. Let me see, and to get back out of this, this is telling me to press start to test. Oh, it's telling me to press start to test it. Let me see. Oh, and it goes back out of it. Okay. That just tells me that it's good. Here we go. And that takes us back out of there. Beautiful. So yeah, that's pretty much for the, the little inside look for this cabinet. So I want to thank everyone for coming around and checking out the channel. If you guys enjoy videos like this, there are two different playlists on the channel for two different types of arcade videos. One of them is for arcade pickups like this and the other one is for quick easy fixes and tips for arcade games. So I will have lots of other gaming videos or arcade videos here coming up pretty soon. So you guys be on the lookout. So I did test this thing out and overall it does work very well. You are able to do all of your moves like you would be able to on a normal size arcade stick. But like everything practice makes perfect so thank you everyone for joining me and i will see you here on the next one it's too much want a bandage